let me look uh, over at the uh, the computer and make sure this is in the frame. Uh, I know some people like to see unboxings. Uh, this is a, uh, a .06 six-sided Bristol wrench. And it's long. And it's meant to go into a handle, which I didn't buy. I'm just going to use it. I like how they sometimes... They wrap up the stuff that couldn't possibly get broken in the mail. They break, they, they uh, wrap really well. And then the stuff that's fragile gets dented or bent. All right, here we go. Still more. One more bag. All right, it's an Exolite by Weller. Weller bought Exolite out. And let's see, I'll, let me get my glasses. I'll tell you what it actually says. And then we'll actually make sure it fits the radio. I've never seen anybody show this before, but it's an it's a 99-62 flute bristol spline blade. Now I would call it a .06 uh, six-sided bristol. And when you look at a bristol, I did a video on these things. When you look at it real quick, it looks like an Allen key. And see how long this is? This is the only way you could reach up in here. Let's get this in the frame. And I'm right, I'm going right. I can't believe this. All right. The uh, 6 kilohertz, or the 6 kilohertz, the kilohertz style has this type um, bolt in it. Now I'm going to go in there, I'm going to go in and make sure it fits. And I can reach it from the outside of the radio. Alright, it doesn't fit in that one. All right, it fits in that one. All right, and it doesn't undo. It's going to need heat. Um, everywhere I go on this radio, someone's been there before me, and the uh, calibration on this radio is way off. Uh, like I said, someone's been in. When I'm troubleshooting it, I'm in the same area that someone's already been in. So uh, one of the problems with this radio, I told you, it's a dash one. And even the one meter, it tells you to throw the switch up and down. Uh, there, there's a hole in the front panel, and there's a blunder plug where that switch should go. So this model is really rare. And I would not recommend an early model Collins. Um, like I told you originally, I bought this radio because it intrigued me the way it worked. And then I bought it. I found out I got an old style PTO, which I found very little information on. It does work. And the radio works quite well on frequencies other than the AM broadcast band. Uh, one of the stations here is up on the second band, which started working after I got the, uh, the wafer switch all cleaned. And I still got to do more cleaning of the wafer switch. But the AM broadcast band, I think I said it was 17 decibels down according to the manual or maybe seven decibels in other words the AM broadcast band I guess was just put on the radio uh, so you could get the local news and that it's not really a radio that you would sit late at night and DX other stations in other states and that's what I expected from it and that's the, that's the rub that rubbed me the wrong way for $530 is no matter what I do to this radio it's got a very poor AM broadcast band and uh, the tube drops uh, they drop the voltage down to 60 volts instead of 90 there's not as many coils it's got an extra mixer to, so it won't be a reverse dial or an inverse dial uh, there's so much as you read about this radio uh, there's people that have restored them but the people that like them the best are the people that operate it as an appliance it's in a cabinet, 
and they only operate it from the outside. And the thing with this radio is it's got good selectivity, which really doesn't matter anymore because there's almost nothing on short wave anymore. Even the ham bands. Uh, yeah, during bad weather, they're on because they can't go outside. But the selectivity is good when you got a bunch of guys next to each other in frequency. Well, that, that doesn't happen much anymore. So all this, the thing that this radio was sold on was extremely frequency stable because of the PTO and the selectivity. And it also has a, a knob on the front. You can select how much selectivity you want. Well, that's useless now because there's only a, a few shortwave stations on and then the ham guy, same thing. Unless it's a contest, uh, you would, probably wouldn't be using this radio. But I would tell you, unless you want to see how it actually works, like I did, and you want to play with uh, a dual conversion radio or, you know, a radio that's got uh, uh, mixers that use a crystal instead of a local oscillator. It uses a crystal oscillator. And there's certain things you might want to see in the flesh. And that's why I bought it. And I didn't realize that my design, when I was getting the inverse dial, it, this gets it also. I, I kept saying, I wonder how they did it. So I actually did the circuitry. And I was getting an inverse dial. And I put a second, an extra mixer in there. And I fixed my problem. But then I get this radio. And it's got several bands that are in red. And they work backwards because they're in inverse just like the problem I had. And uh, this is this is a bastard one because uh, it's a very early model. And they said that the Dash 1s were, you know, like a, a, a unit they might send to the military to check it out, to see if they want to place an order. So it's got, it, got, it has things that are wired differently than the, the more recent schematics. See, I found the uh, Dash 2 schematics this is a dash one and it's very close but when you're actually troubleshooting it it's slightly different and this thing's loaded with gears and it really should be taken totally apart and rebuilt but you can have a radio that's 70 years old and things are going off the air weekly now i don't know if you watch youtube videos the bbc is getting rid of stations uh, it's, it's a dying hobby. Ham radio has been slowly dying. You know, people are on their cell phones. They're having fun. And I keep telling you that if I could find a better hobby, I would have it. Uh, this is a, me, my interest in radios uh, come from the fact that I couldn't afford any of them when I was younger. So what happens is now I have a little extra money and free time I tend to buy one of these things. And this was, I think, I, I thought the last radio I bought, the BC348, that the guy had cut all the wires in it and I troubleshot every wire. I thought that was the end. And then I saw this thing, I started building a radio that modeled this only in solid state. And I got it all working. And then I said, let me actually buy the thing. I wanna really see this work up front. So for $530, I got my wish. And, uh, you know, this was $12, $12 now into the deep hole. You know, this is the, this is a 0 .06, six sided bristle. I read you the number. Uh, this is a very common bristle. Now, other wrenches, uh, bolts in this radio or, or screws, uh, use other type bristles. They use a four sided bristle in places. So if you're going to work with old Hammerlands, Hellcrafters, uh, command radios, you, you need to get your set a, yourself a set of bristle wrenches. You can get them on eBay. It's like 38 bucks uh, before you no longer get them. Because that's that's an old um, military standard with bristle wrenches. When I worked there, aerospace or avionics, uh, I had complete sets of bristles, extra long, short ones. Uh, the guy next to me, me and him built uh, uh, Bristol wrenches mounted in soldering irons. Like I might need one here. In other words, there's glip thaw on that set screw. So what you got to do is I have a heat unit, which I can put a piece of tubing on it. Um, uh, the desoldering uses heat. You can put a piece of brass tubing on the tip and run it up there and heat 
that uh, bristle screw before you put the wrench in it and maybe get it to click loose. But this knob that needs to be adjusted is sitting on a gear. Uh, it's bogus. Instead of being on a smooth quarter inch shaft, it's actually sitting on a gear. So this thing's like a prototype. And a lot of the parts aren't made, haven't been made in their final stage or mounted in the same spot. So if someone was a, a collector, they might want this. But I guarantee you there are more of these out there. They said they made about 100. So there's real, really no use for this radio anymore. Uh, like I said, I wanted to see how it actually operated. And I didn't realize it was going to have a bunch of cams and, and, and pistons that moved up inside of, in, up and down in coils. And then uh, us, besides the cams and gears, you'll still have your, um, your wafer switches, which are a pain in the ass. And this thing's got uh, 12 wafer switch units or wafers themselves. It's a nightmare. And I'm still not done. And I think I'm going to put it away for a while, maybe forever. Uh, because I got it all working, but it's not restored. And I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, on this unit because I don't have the cover for it. I got the bottom cover. Uh, a lot of the bolts on it to hold the covers on are wrong. Uh, this thing's been, you know, it's been neglected. It's been used. I, I won't say it gave up the ghost. It still works. The transformer's still good in it. And I see a lot of the parts for this thing on eBay. The person just takes the parts off and puts them up for sale. And they sit there. Nobody wants them. And the BC348s, there's a, I think there's like eight of them up there on eBay. Nobody seems to want. See, I got this feeling that every time I buy something, I'm the last person on earth that actually wants it. You know, it's like the if you watch the Married with Children with the Bundys and their yard sale, all the things they ended up with they were the last ones to own it. In other words, nobody wanted to buy anything from them. And this is sort of that kind of thing. Uh, people, are, they're, in, they're, they're streaming, they're texting, they're, uh, they're watching movies, you know, down, download movies, streaming movies. They don't care about shortwave radios anymore. I just, like I said, um, my problem is I couldn't afford really good radios when I was younger. And I always had junk I pulled out of the garbage. Or my father would bring something home from work from somebody, and I have to fix it, and I get it work, and it didn't have a BFO in it because it was basically set up for a, a consumer product, for in like in the living room, big big honking uh, radio, you know. It's I that's what I had, and I would take the the person would always give me just the, the chassis. I never got the case for like a, a Zenith radio, but a lot of my radios. Uh, were Philco's. People gave them to my father, and my father bring it in. And I said one time, doesn't anybody have the case for this radio? So he asked the guy, and the guy says, yeah, I got the case yet. So he couldn't fit it in his little car, so he cut the, the big case. I, it was a big cabinet, and about the size of um, a little bit smaller than a refrigerator. So he cut it, and when he cut it across, he didn't even cut it straight. My father, my father hands me the keys when he comes in from work. He goes, uh, you'll probably just put it in the garbage. And I go, really that bad? I figured it would be nicks and bangs. And I go out to the car, I open the hood, I open the trunk, and there's the case. It's been sawed with a circular saw, crooked. It could, The guy could have done it 10 different ways and it had been better. And I just did. I put it, it was garbage and I put it right on the curb. And my father says, it's a shame the guy couldn't find a bigger car to bring it into work. But it is what it is. But that's why I have these attachments to these radios, plus the circuitry. I'll see the circuit. And in the case of the uh, Collins 51J, uh, you see all these dotted lines between all these coils. And yes, they all work together, sort of. In other words, when you throw the band switch, they all move together, but then they don't move anymore. There's a few coils uh, off the PTO that move. So if you know anything about uh, other shortwave radios, when you turn the the uh, tuning knob, the main tuning, you're turning a capacitor that's uh, kind of be four, it could be four sections, three sections, four sections. It's tuning the radio to that frequency. This is done differently because it's a dual conversion. 
and uh, read up on this stuff. It's, it's very interesting, but it's a dead hobby. And I have the comments closed because I don't want to argue with people. It's not really dead. It's still it's dead. It's dead. Uh, Radio Shacks are dead. Uh, I won't go. I don't want to go ranting into another thing with people trying to get me to fix stuff in the neighborhood here. Stuff that should have been at the curb uh, 20 years ago. I think that's it. All right. That's it.